back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Phyllis McGinley. She lived from 1905 to 1978 and is known primarily for writing children's books and poetry, poetry which is um, quite humorous and satirical at times. And she won the Pulitzer Prize in 1961. A few weeks ago before Christmas, I read a sampler of Phyllis McGinley uh, Christmas-themed poems, but this is a New Year-themed poem. It's actually called Twelfth Night, and while I realize today is not uh, technically a Twelfth Night that I'm recording and running this episode, it, uh, it still works for this particular week as, as the Twelve Days of Christmas begin to wrap up. So here it is, Twelfth Night by Phyllis McGinley. Down from the window, take the withered holly. Feed the torn tissue to the literal blaze. Now, now at last are come the melancholy, anticlimactic days. Here in the light of morning, hard, unvarnished, let us with haste dismantle the tired tree of ornaments, a trifle chipped and tarnished. Pretend we do not see how all the rooms seem shabbier and meaner, and the tired house a little less than snug. Fold up the tinsel. Run the vacuum cleaner over the littered rug. Nothing is left. The postman passes by now, bearing no gifts, no kind or seasonal word. The icebox yields no wing, no nibbled thigh now from any holiday bird. Sharp in the streets the north wind plagues its betters while Christmas snow to gutters is consigned. Nothing remains except the thank you letters, most tedious to the mind, and the gilt gadget, duplicated, which is marked for exchange at Abercrombie Fitch's. When I was reading about uh, Phyllis McGinley, doing a little bit of research, I was reading about how many of her contemporaries, including Sylvia Plath, were not fond of McGinley's choice to write what they called light verse. In fact, Plath said that she sold herself by doing that, that that was her line, quote, she sold herself. And I was reading how her choice to write light verse was not in keeping, was kind of counter the, the age, counter the poetic movements going on. You know, it was sort of anti-avant-garde in a way. And, and that that made her work seem old-fashioned or out of place, both formally and ideologically. But she said that, quote, in times of unrest and fear, it is perhaps the writer's duty to celebrate, to single out some values we can cherish, to talk about some of the few warm things we know in a cold world. And if you look at the, the Wikipedia entry on Phyllis McGinley, there is a quote from Megan Ann Leroy, who wrote an article called Writing the Mean, Phyllis McGinley and American Domesticity, which was published in 2007. It, it says this, Like writing light verse, housewifery took seemingly effortless skill, nuance, and balance. It too required a balancing act of mother, housekeeper, hostess, where wit and humor were employed just as much as in McGinley's poetry. Delicacy in awkward situations not only was the role of the hostess housewife, but also could be said of McGinley's verse as well. Both professions benefit from perfect form and the ability to be light with one's feet. End quote. Those two quotes, both McGinley's quote about bringing some warm things to a cold world, and then Leroy's quote about McGinley's poetry and the the delicacy that it displayed, the the lightness on her feet that it displayed, you know, so to speak, are, are interesting when thought about in combination. Because for McGinley to stand out, she would have had to have been light on her feet to stand out in a world of poetry that was avant-garde, to write in a way that is sort of counter to the age, and then still stand out, to still stand out enough to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1961, would have taken a great deal of skill in a way of navigating that world. You know, she's a true poet, right? You can see her as the housewife, which Leroy talks about there, taking down the Christmas things having taken such joy in the warmth and the lightness, in the coziness and the snugness of the Christmas decorations, perhaps for for a few weeks or perhaps a month. And she she finds herself taking them down and looking around and kind of mourning the loss of that season. It's a poem that both looks back with some nostalgia, some melancholy, and it also in some ways looks forward to her return to normalcy, to, to routines. Throughout the poem, she's doing things, she's taking on the Christmas decorations, but she's also doing things that she's going to have to do to clean her home. And, and she presents it in a way that does offer it as if it's a sort of noble thing, like the things that she's doing, they're perhaps her duty, but it seems like she takes some pride in them, that there is some poetry in the everyday. You know, there's many poets that have written about the, the poetry of the everyday, the poetry of the quotidian, Wendell Berry being a, a great example of that. 
But ultimately, even the most avant-garde of poets is sort of consumed by what the everyday means to the everyman, I think. Um, And Phyllis McGinley is no different on that. But anyway, here is Twelfth Night one more time. Down from the window, take the withered holly. Feed the torn tissue to the literal blaze. Now, now at last are come the melancholy anticlimactic days. Here in the light of morning, hard, unvarnished, let us with haste dismantle the tired tree of ornaments, a trifle chipped and tarnished. Pretend we do not see how all the rooms seem shabbier and meaner, and the tired house a little less than snug. Fold up the tinsel. Run the vacuum cleaner over the littered rug. Nothing is left. The postman passes by now, bearing no gifts, no kind or seasonal word. The icebox yields no wing, no nibbled thigh now from any holiday bird. Sharp in the streets the north wind plagues its betters while Christmas snow to gutters is consigned. Nothing remains except the thank you letters, most tedious to the mind, and the gilt gadget, duplicated, which is marked for exchange at Abercrombie Fitch's. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another one. Thank you.